Hi, my name is Rebecca Fritz and I am covering my ass. <laughs> so this is, um, oh, I don't know. I've done maybe another half a dozen videos. Um, I have social anxiety and it's difficult for me to uh, do this kind of stuff. So I am going to smoke a joint <laughs> while I do it. Yes, it's legal. Yes, I have a medical card. So everything I'm doing is completely legal. It is five in the morning. My children are asleep. Um, so just to clear that up, wouldn't want anybody coming to my door for a stupid reason. So. I'm doing this video because I've been with a man for almost 20 years. Who has been completely ostracized and harassed by the system and society for no good reason. He was given a charge at 13 years old as a juvenile. Michigan law, first off, says that juvenile lifers, uh, that it's, it's illegal, it's unconstitutional, and they've struck that down. However, Michigan, the agents who are supposed to uphold the law are not. So every time they're deeming something unconstitutional, they're just doing whatever the fuck they want and ignoring it. Uh, the father of my four children, Daryl Fernald, is currently... Uh, down in Jackson, Michigan, in a cell um, surrounded by people with coronavirus, and he probably is going to get it too, and he may die because of it, and for no good reason. Um, they have a no-contact order placed on him in regards to me because of a domestic violence that occurred between us, and I can tell you that I wouldn't stay with an abuser, first off, Second off, um, the first 12, 13 years we were together, he wasn't like that. He actually tried to do the right thing. He was trying to be an upstanding citizen. He's always been a good father. Um, but the stress of having to deal with the requirements of the sex offender registry are a direct, I mean, the issues that we've had are a direct result of having him having to deal with that because we couldn't find housing. He couldn't find employment. Um, it's been a fucking nightmare and it's done everything but tear us apart and he's a good man he deserves to be able to complete a parole and live like a regular human being and for you know for the term do the crime do the time to actually apply to him as opposed to just this other bullshit which is his time is never over they keep pulling him back in he has no self-esteem because he can't be a man in the situation where he can provide for his family and feel some type of, um, you know, like he's a man, <laughs> like he's a man. He wants to be a man. He wants to be seen as a man. He wants to be loved as a man. He wants to be able to see, be seen in the world as a man. And he should be able to, he's a man. And when he was sentenced with this, he was a child. Um, I didn't know my ass from holding the ground when I was 15. So, um, in addition to that, the statistical, probability of a juvenile sex offender reoffending is like one to five percent okay i trust him with my life i trust him with the lives of my children um i know that he would not hurt any of us um outside of you know me and him getting into it and yes i have put my hands on him as well which i haven't gone to prison for it and some of those times that he's went in um we were fighting and I did put my hands on him first. Not that he shouldn't have walked away, which he has walked away a bunch of times. I am frustrated with the situation. I am frustrated with the fact that our family can never get ahead because they're always pulling him back down and he is a crucial ingredient in the success of my family. Um, as am I, I've had to be everything because of, literally because of egregious unconstitutional Mich Michigan law. So um, at any rate, I have written a letter to the parole board um, asking that they release him and drop the no contact against me. And I'm about to read this out loud on video in order to um, cover my ass because I'm letting them know, hey, if you don't follow Michigan law, 
A federal judge has told you you can't keep sentencing these people to these egregious rules that they cannot follow. If it's if you can't follow it and it's impossible to maintain, then it shouldn't be a law because it's it's illogical. It won't work. It's impossible. So here we go. Dear Department of Corrections slash parole board slash to whom else it concerns. And this is on 320 that I wrote this. At this point, this coronavirus has upended a lot of things, and I am writing not only because of these new and scary developments, but also because of the long-term issue I have encountered as the 19-year partner of Daryl Fernault. My name is Rebecca, and I'm writing to have the no contact order dropped. Please take a moment of time to allow me to explain why. Daryl Fernald was convicted of CSC charges at 13 years old. He was literally still a child and the judge who sentenced him, Judge Morris is deceased, but told him in court that if he completed his program at the Maxi Boys Training School that it would be expunged from his record. The expungement was never done. And although, as you should well know, the recidivism rate for juvenile sex offenders is extremely low, between 1% to 5%. This charge he got as a child has destroyed his life, and for him, the term do the crime, do the time, and that's it is never the case because his sentence is literally never over. I met him at 21, we are the same age, and he told me at that time that it wasn't fair to me if I was with him. Because he said it was like a death sentence, except no death. I didn't understand. I didn't believe him. I didn't get it until we were together for a while. And I saw in reality that he was a modern day leper. He got a custodial maintenance degree when he was in prison, but no one out here would hire him because of his CSC. We tried countless times to find him adequate housing, but no one would allow him to stay anywhere. I lost Mishta housing because the prison in the UP paroled him to my house and I was nine months pregnant with placenta previa and they booted me out of my Mishta house at nine months pregnant and I was homeless because of these horrible sex offender rules. Um, we've had to live in our vehicles. I have watched him try and try out here to do the right thing, but he has been rejected and harassed to the point that he feels there is no hope and deals with chronic depression and anxiety because of it. Please notice that when he's locked up, he's a stellar student in all required classes and programs and has even been given certificates of leadership twice by wardens at facilities he's been at. People within the system have noticed his intelligence and potential, as have I. However, once he gets on the streets, he is ostracized and denied employment and housing, which led to such chronic homelessness that the Michigan courts literally changed the law regarding registry of homeless offenders because of how impossible the stringent requirements have been. The fact is that Daryl Fernald wants to be a productive member of society, and having known him for almost 20 years, I know this for a fact. If you look at his record, you'll see that most of his recent crimes the last decade or so were crimes directly connected to his inability to find and keep housing and employment due to these sex offender laws, which are in essence a form of double jeopardy. The sex offender requirements have put an enormous amount of stress on our relationship and also my life and the lives of our children. The sex offender laws are unconstitutional and a federal judge out of Port Huron has ordered Michigan legislature to fix the issue and they have not and 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 have not. And what I'm going through right now is a direct result of that. Fuck you, state of Michigan. The harassment of CSC prisoners upon release has become a cottage industry as in they make money off of it so why the fuck would they actually have any interest in fixing the problem and it is not about the statistical dangers of especially a juvenile offender or actual recidivism these skewed laws cause the recidivism the way the laws are written cause people to fucking violate period period the first decade that he and I were together, he was a beautiful soul who really wanted to try and be an upstanding citizen. He still talks to me about being an upstanding citizen, doing things the right way. And, and from what I've seen and what from, from what I've seen of the system, just knowing him, that's one of the reasons I'm an activist, because he showed me the fucking truth. 
Uh, but his soul's been crushed by trying to follow rules that cannot be followed. I've watched him try to find housing. I've watched him not get hired or be fired once the employer runs his record. I've also obtained housing myself. Come to find out that there's a church nearby that has a school in it. There's a daycare center. There's a school that's closed down. Not even open. But yet he still can't live a thousand within a thousand feet of a school that's not even open and running. Hasn't been for years. This is the kind of shit I'm talking about. You are fucked before you even take your first step forward. Completely screwed. So what the fuck is the point? What's the point? He is still being punished for 26 years ago. And these laws are all ex post facto. And that makes them egregiously illegal. Ex post facto, for anybody who doesn't know, is um, a law is made that's retroactive. Um, which means if the person who was making the plea knew that the law would be changed in the future to continuously cage and destroy him, he wouldn't have pled guilty in the first place. Maybe he would have took it to trial. Ex post facto, it's very unconstitutionally illegal. All of this is heavy enough, but the last time he was out was really messed up. At Operation Get Down, he was forced to hang his leg out the window because the MDOC tether kept going off as though he was violating. Literally watched this for hours. I watched him, and I watched how tired he was. The tether was faulty, and I literally watched him on video chat hanging his leg out the window and going onto the roof of the building in order to get any sleep. And it was cold. Cold at night on the top of a fucking building. <sighs> Daryl was sleep deprived due to the tether constantly registering him as violated, even though he was sitting in the building. Him going to operation get down with faulty equipment that sleep deprives him and is tantamount to Chinese water torture is unacceptable, and it's no wonder he is continuously in violation. Such things drive one crazy, literally crazy. I am a witness to all of this for almost 20 years, and I'm sick of the man I love being crucified. I'm sick of it. He did not cut his tether, and none of your agents cared one bit. They would not listen when I told them he didn't violate himself. I was on video chat with the person who, who took him from that building. He got punched. He got knocked out in the seat of a vehicle. I know what happened and nobody would listen to me, but whatever, it's done now. Um, no one would listen to me. At any rate, the U.S. Marshals put Daryl Fernald on a newsreel on Channel 7 News, and now he has been faced left and right with people trying to kill him while he's incarcerated. My life out here has been threatened because of being his partner and the lives of our four children have been threatened because of this horrible newsreel naming him Detroit's Most Wanted. He's far from that. Uh, he's a man who's been harassed to the point where most days he thinks of offing himself because what's the point? Your system has not done justice. The unconstitutional rules he is forced to live by have destroyed him, me, and are now destroying his children. Not because he did the crime and did the time but because his time is never over, never. So I ask that you drop the no contact order and allow him to come home to his family. Michigan law now states that the thousand foot rule does not apply, not that he's ever been a danger to any children. This is a man who wants a normal life. He wants to do right. And I wouldn't be with him otherwise. Anybody who knows me <laughs> knows my back story, um, understands that. The unconstitutional laws he has been forced to abide by have done all but destroyed our relationship, and I am all he has ever had, ever. It's ludicrous to still have this man tied to the whipping post while claiming that the system wants him to be a productive member of society. The domestic violence that has occurred between him and I has been a direct result of the stressors of a family unit that hasn't been able to ever get above water in society because the man in the situation is never allowed to actually be a man. The pride he normally could feel in being an adequate provider, he is never allowed to feel. Because he's a leper. 
and he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve it at all. He's an excellent father and a loving, considerate partner when his self-esteem isn't being perpetually annihilated by unconstitutional rules. I'm standing here saying actually give him a chance and he will complete his parole and be that productive societal force. Like actually give him a fucking chance. Housing. A job. You know, a vehicle that doesn't break down every other day. Um, you know, I have the circles. I have healthy circles for him to run in. Like that's, that part's not an issue. It is, does he ever even have the opportunity to more resources to fulfill what they're asking him to fulfill. No, he does not. He's not given that. And a matter of fact, I've, I've literally heard a parole agent say to him, I'm going to violate you. Like he already has mine made up. It didn't matter. And he was actively basically gunning for him. It's horrible. It's sick. It's disgusting. And I will put this shit out here. Oh, yes. I have lots and lots of stuff to put out. And, you know, I, I, I talk to other people who have things that they're putting out too. They, that they need heard. Please parole him to my address. It's what should have been done all this time. It is not illegal to parole him here. And for God's sake, don't put him on a tether. Your equipment doesn't work. It is faulty. And then he pays the price for that negligence. And he very, he very much did and has, and I have watched it. I have sat back for 19 years and watched him get screwed over, over and over again, and I'm tired of it, so I'm standing up. I'm writing a book called Detroit's Most Wanted, and I will be detailing every single thing he's endured due to ex post facto Michigan law. He has been set up to fail, and I'm tired of it, and the more injustice he continues to receive, the louder I am going to be in print, on social media, and on YouTube. And if he dies while in custody or is set up to fail again in unconstitutional circumstances, I am prepared to name a whole lot of names, and the louder my proclamation of the truth will be. I am an activist in Detroit, and I have thousands of people I can call on to demonstrate if it is necessary. This is not a threat. It is simply the truth. And it's time the truth comes out and he's actually given a chance because your system has never done this. Never. Please release him. He deserves it. Sincerely, Rebecca. I am very proud of Dee. He showed me the truth of life underneath the gloss that the government shows and I am forever changed and a better person because of him. And if anyone actually knew how awesome he was, they would not be gunning for him at all. Um, or if it, they didn't have a financial incentive to consistently fuck him over some more, then, you know, at any rate, he shouldn't be treated that way and he needs to be released and I have a safe place here and he deserves it. <laughs>